Hello everyone, this is your girl Jenna. And today, I wanna to talk about why I feel divorce and breakups are in the air, all right? But before we get into the content, guys, or the video, rather, I would love for you to go ahead and thumbs this video up. Also, make sure you subscribe if you have not already. And hit the all button so you can get notified when we upload videos. Okay? I hope all is well with you guys. And if it's not, I pray that it gets better for you. All right? Let's get into it. So... You know, I was thinking about this topic, you know, because obviously, you know, the Tia and Corey divorce is really like circulating, circulating. And thanks to everyone who um, gave to my video and uh, commented and everything. I, I love you guys. Thanks so much. That video is actually one of our biggest videos in the last maybe few years of this, this channel. So I do appreciate that and shout out to all of the new subscribers and I hope you guys uh, stay tuned and enjoy the, the content here. All right, so me and myself, I've been married for 19 years. My husband and I have been married um, together for 20. And I'm gonna tell you, the major reason why a lot of these, these um, relationships I feel are breaking up are uh, solely because of this huge issue we're going through, right? I mean, during the time, and you guys know what I'm talking about, you had to stay in the house, you had to realize what was going on, you had to really know your partner, because you have to understand, in the Hollywood game, you know, they're very rarely together. And so to have to put work aside and actually be family, I think is something that uh, a lot of these celebrities uh, have had to get used to, okay? Let's talk about, you know, name some couples. You have Neo and his wife who broke up. Of course, Tia and Tamara who's broken up. You got um, Tom Brady and his wife are, are going for divorce. Uh, Cynthia Bailey and Mike Hill, um, you know, are questionable. They're saying they may be headed to divorce. And, you know, and just in regular life, I've heard a lot of people are getting a divorce. Well, let's go back, like, you know, into the Tia and Tamara. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was telling my husband. I was like, if you say Tia, you have to say Tamara. They're, they're you know, they're a unit. But no, Tia and Corey. Um, the thing that is really circulating about this marriage is that she met him on a bus stop. Okay, let's just stop here, okay? When I met my husband, my husband was in his mother's house and he didn't have a car. And I was, you know, on college campus, okay? We didn't, we didn't have a lot of money, you know? I didn't even have a license. I didn't have a home, I didn't even have a job. You know, my husband had a job, he didn't have a car and he still lives at home with his mom, but I mean, I think that's awesome that they connected that way. So the fact that people are putting that up there, oh, you know, uh, she met him on the bus stop. Like, no, I mean, that's a, a, good, a cool beginning. You know, of course, you know, in this world, we would want the man to be the person who has it all and us women want to be, you know, uh, swept off of our feet. But it's not like that all the time. Sometimes, I mean, it's another story um, I heard about uh, Denzel and Pauletta. No, they're not getting a divorce. They are 35 plus years strong. But if you know about their backstory, um, Denzel didn't have any money. Okay, he didn't have any money or he didn't have money for a cab or whatever. But anyway, Pauletta, um, she paid. And I feel like that was the best 5 or $10 she spent or whatever for the first date. Um, and, and you see them now. Another story would be, of course, our, you know, ex-president, uh, Barack Obama and Michelle. I mean, Barack Obama didn't have a lot of money. He didn't have, you know, a lot of, he, he was not the president when Michelle first met him and look at them now, they're a power couple. So meeting, you know, your spouse or your future spouse and, you know, while being in very humble beginnings, I think that's awesome, why? Because you can grow together. Okay, now one thing you don't want to do, guys, is you, and 
whether this is women or men, you know, especially us ladies, because I know it's a lot of ladies on this channel. So I have to kind of like speak directly to you guys. When you, find, you know, when you are found by a man who may not have a lot of materials, you don't want to feel like, oh, I am the one who did this and I helped you out. You don't want to throw things in a man's face. Um, there's a influencer out here, Tabitha. I don't know if her name is Tabitha Brown or whatever, but I really don't watch her. And I was just turned off a little bit. Just me being introduced to her, like her content. And when she said she helped her husband retire. And I'm like, you know, because he was, you know, an officer. And I just felt like, uh, you know, if he really told the story, would he want his wife to say that she made it where he could retire off his job? You know, we as women, when we become, I hate to say it, the breadwinner or the head of the house, technically guys, or ladies rather, you making more money still does not make you the head of the home. You have to allow your men to be a man. A man wants to be a provider. And it's not just about money. Providing is not just about money. I wish it were, but it's not. It's deeper than that. Because if you're married long enough, you're going to go through ups and downs. See, we say these vows as married people, but we really don't know what they mean. I'm in my lower 40s. I'm just in my 40s. And I'm learning, yes, the ultimate marriage is a marriage who knows how to weather the good times. I just said something. The good times. A lot of marriages do not know how to weather the good times. Because during those times, people become a little cocky. They become a little bit vain. They become about I, I, I. You become selfish. A lot, a lot of people, you know, can weather the bad times because first and foremost, you don't have that thing called money. Money gets you in trouble if you don't know what to do with it. I know my husband and I, we've had so many times where we've had money and it was those times in which he and I were at, you know, at odds. And I'm like, you know what? I want us to be able to get along when we're making money as well. I don't want it to be where I feel like I'm the one, you know, because in social media, guys, my husband is, is, uh, he's, he's my support, you know, he is the one who, you know, of course, guys are not always on camera, you know, us women, we talk for a living, right? We, it's easy for us to talk. So a lot of YouTube channels and all the, uh, things that we watch are women because we, we talk, but just understand that my husband is my support system. And at no time do I feel like or do I make him feel like he's less than because he's not the one who does the, the forefront of the business. Because without the, the, the support system, I'm not going to say the back end because my husband doesn't like that word, you know. And sometimes, you know, it's not about being the back, it's the support. Um, and words have life. And, and yes, you have to be careful how you talk and how you communicate because people are sensitive. I'm a sensitive person. Okay. And so... Yes, I at no time am I ever to make him feel like he's less than because he doesn't do the 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 uh, forefront of the of the uh, business. And sometimes us women, we don't understand that what we say in our mouths can be mean. If you go to the animal kingdom, the lion, <laughs> the lioness is the one who goes out and she hunts. You know, and the male, he just lays around, right? Looks like he's lazy. No, he's the protector. You know, at the end of the day, ladies, he is the protector. It's not about money. It's not about him being aggressive. He's still the protector. You have to let your man know that. And I feel like, you know, in these marriages that we're seeing now, it's the women in the forefront. Tia's in the forefront. She has her social media. And we see Corey and we like, you know, I'm reading all the blogs and the, and the, um, the uh, comments and they're all saying oh he looks like he's not into her he looks I mean what do you expect you want him to be groveling over her you want him to be kissy kissy if he was always all over her y'all would think oh he's being phony these marriages are always in the spotlight and we really don't know what's going on but those is, is there some common things that go on in marriages whether you're a billionaire or you have one dollar in the bank and that is respect. You have to have respect and you also have to know your role. 
a lot of people forget their roles. What's your role as being a wife? Okay, ladies, I'm a biblical woman. I'm going to give you uh, a scripture. I'm going to give you a scripture that, okay, and the verse is Proverbs, Proverbs 31. Okay, it is Proverbs 31. Okay, if you're interested, go ahead and, and actually read that. And it'll tell you what your role is as a woman and as a wife. I had to come across this uh, scripture and it really put light to our role as women and as wives. And we have to support our men. Okay, we have to. We have to love them. The same way that we met them, we have to keep that regardless. And it's not easy. It's a day by day thing. But after a while, when you realize, when you have to really say, you know what, I'm thankful for this man. Because the thing about it is, as we get older, our energies change. Our strengths change. The man cannot always be the 100% provider. We must provide two different things, you know. He's the head and we're the neck lady. So we have to learn that even if we have some, you know, we are making more money. We have more energy and we're able to navigate through the home better. We're able to multitask and take care of the children and take care of the home and take care outside of the home and things. Because that's just how God made us. At no time are we to put a man down. A man does not communicate everything through verbal but he does through you know how he reacts and when he becomes recluse or he becomes like ostracized himself from from you and from others that's when it's dangerous that's when the devil can come on in and the devil can be in a nice sleek dress and knows how to talk and smells great and looks great to him Okay, and vice versa, because I know somebody's going to say, that works both ways. It does. It does. But I am a person who's, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking straight to my ladies right now. And fellas, if you're listening right now, you have to understand, communication is key. A lot of women, you know, we would love to know what you need. Yes, there are women out here who would love to cater to their men because it's very easy it's easier for me to know what you need i don't want to i'm not a mind reader and ladies men are not mind readers either okay you have to make schedules for each other i know t and t and tamara i'm sorry you know i'm gonna say t and tamara but no tia and corey i remember they said they had to take some time where they would basically pencil in their intimate time Oh, once you have to schedule it, that's a, a little red flag there. Okay? But it's better to not, it's better than, you know, completely like, you know, neglecting. But once you do that, and, and my marriage is like that too sometimes. I have to, you know, like, because we're working all the time. When you are a provider of content for the internet, you have to stay on top of your game. Why? Because it's a lot of competition out here. So you can imagine if my husband and I, we both do the same thing. We work on all of our social medias, our TikToks, our YouTubes, our Facebook, our Instagrams. We work on all of those every day, seven days a week. And we hardly have time for each other. And sometimes when you rack up the years, because a lot of people say, well, they've been together for 14 years, going back to T and Corey. Honey, the more years doesn't make it easier. It makes it harder sometimes because then you come to a point where you become used to things. When things start to blend in, when everything becomes gray, you have children, you have, I mean, really, it, it's, it's almost like you're on autopilot. And once you become on autopilot, things tend to get neglected. You don't even think about it anymore. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know my, my husband's birthday is coming up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to do something for him. And this and that. And, like, I'm thinking about that now. You know, oh, it's, I don't say, oh, his birthday, oh, whatever. I don't, I, I try not to do that. Because every birthday is a blessing. Every anniversary is a blessing. We try to do something special. We try. 
It's not, it's not easy in this, you know, but you have to do that. And so, you know, no, we're not on a celebrity status, but we are in a status where we're in the same home all the time and we're working. He may be working in one room or working in another. And sometimes 10 and 12 hours can pass and we don't really talk about each other. We, 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 him and I, we can be in the same room and we'll text each other. And sometimes I'll text him little, 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 you know, little things to keep his mind and, and, and things like that. You know, I do little things to keep his mind and understand I'm his wife, not just his partner, not just his work buddy, but I'm his wife, you know, and I don't require the same from him because he's different. So his love language, yes, I'm going to talk about love language. His love language is different than my love language. Okay. And so when I was younger, I would think, well, I'm sending him a lot of texts. He should do the same. No, just because you're doing X, Y, and Z, and this is probably going to be a part two guys, you know, um, just because you're doing X, Y, and Z does not mean he's going to do X, Y, and Z. Don't expect it. If you're really doing something for the sake of your, your spouse, then it's for them. Don't expect it back. They're going to show you how they feel about you differently, but it doesn't say that it's, it's, they love you less, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, this is, this is awesome. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, but I'm going to do a part two to this video. This is coming from my heart. I didn't write it down. I'm literally just basically taking my own thoughts on my marriage and just kind of like putting it out there and seeing where, uh, you know, some holes could be in people's relationships. And hopefully you guys are taking um, from it as well. All right. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two, um, because I feel like you guys are going to really benefit from it. Thanks for watching.